Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's uh, daily market review for February the 14th. I'm Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our uh, disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will uh, leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest and then we will jump into the markets. Okay, today we are going to talk about uh, risk sentiment again, given that uh, stocks rebounded during the Asian morning today on reports of uh, slowing virus cases and deaths. Then I will talk about uh, the US CPIs, which uh, came, came in better than expected. Uh, in my own surprise as well, I remember that I was, uh, I was expecting a slowdown in both the headline and the core uh, rate. Then I will talk about uh, the pound, which surged uh, after finance uh, minis after UK's finance minister uh, resigned. Then about the euro, which uh, kept tumbling ahead of uh, eurozone's GDP, the second estimate of uh, GDP for the fourth quarter, which is coming out today. And as for the rest of uh, Today's events, we have uh, the U U.S. retail sales for January, the U.S. industrial production and manufacturing production for the same month, as well as the preliminary U University of Michigan uh, Consumer Sentiment Index for February. So let's start, as always, with the performance of the U.S. dollar against the other digital currencies. On the graph, we see that the dollar traded higher against uh, the majority of the other G10s on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It gained versus uh, the Euro, SEC, the Kiwi and the Swiss franc and slightly against the Canadian dollar while it was surrendered to the pound's uh, massive strength. You can see here how uh, strong was the pound yesterday. Against Aussie, uh, the Yen and the NOC, uh, the, the dollar was uh, found virtually unchanged. Once again, we cannot derive safe conclusions with regards to the broader market sentiment by just looking at the performance of the G10 currencies and thus we will turn our gaze to the equity world. Here most major EU and US indices traded uh, in the red. You can see here declines in, uh, major, in major EU and US indices with uh, concerns over the steep surge in virus cases and deaths reported yesterday uh, rolling into those sessions as well. That said, sentiment was once again re reversed during the Asian morning today with the majority of Asian bourses trading in green territory. Despite Japan's Nikkei uh, Nikkei 225 losing 0.59%, China's uh, Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng gained 0.38 and 0.25% respectively. It seems that uh, EU and US markets await to get uh, the signals from uh, the Asian session on how they should perform. Yesterday, they slid on reports over a steep acceleration in cor coronavirus uh, cases and deaths, while today they may rebound for exactly the opposite uh, reason. Today, they were, uh, there were officially reported uh, 4,919 cases and 122 deaths worldwide for the day of Thursday, which is much less than uh, Wednesday's uh, large numbers. Looking at the graphs I've been posting on a daily basis recently, we can see that we are back in a slowdown mode after the search 
we have the fall back below uh, zero in both cases and deaths. Remember that anything above zero points to acceleration while anything below zero points to slowdown and we are back below zero in both cases and uh, deaths. As for our view though, things have not become better and we don't think that the impact on, uh, on global economic growth will be less than what we believed yesterday. After all, after all following Wednesday's search due to a new method of, ad of identifying cases, a slowdown just the next day appears more than normal to us. On top of that, if we treat Wednesday's numbers as outliers, Still, Thursdays uh, are the largest daily counts since the outbreak of the virus. In other words, in other words if it wasn't for uh, Wednesday's uh, search, we would be in acceleration mode. And we can see that here. This is Wednesday's search in both uh, deaths and uh, cases. The blue color uh, points to the to the deaths numbers while the gray color points to the um, cases numbers and this is the deaths and cases per day they are the daily deaths and cases and you can see that if it wasn't for uh, Wednesday's numbers yesterday's prints would still have been the highest up until now and on the previous graphs where we identify acceleration and slowdown, we would be on acceleration mode. Thus, we stick to our guns that uh, the worst is not behind us yet, and we repeat that we will take things day by day. Although EU and US indices may follow the overnight rebound and trade higher uh, today, we are still reluctant to trust a long-lasting recovery. We believe that the effects may not be so temporary as many believe and that further spreading may not impact only uh, the growth for the first quarter, but the economic wounds could well drag into the second quarter. Thus, anything suggesting that the virus is uh, far from being contained may serve uh, another round of risk aversion with investors abandoning risk assets, uh, abandoning risk assets again and seeking shelter in uh, safe havens. Now, uh, let's talk a bit about uh, the US CPIs, which were released yesterday. The dollar may have remained relatively strong uh, despite the risk uh, rebound overnight and this, perhaps this was due to the better than expected uh, CPIs. The headline rate rose to 2.5% from 2.3%. The forecast was for, a, for an uptick to 2.4%, while the core rate held steady at 2.3%, beating estimates of a slowdown to 2.2%. That uh, said, with uh, the core rate staying unchanged, the investors may have been worried that the core PC year-over-year -year rate, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric, may held steady as well at 1.6%, well below the bank's objective of 2%. Thus, their expectations over a September, over a September rate cut have not changed. Okay, on this graph we see that uh, the core CPI appears to be very correlated with the uh, core PCE year over year rate despite both uh, despite uh, the time series following uh, different um, different uh, rates so if uh, the core CPI given that the core CPI uh, held steady uh, held steady yesterday the core PCE may stay unchanged at 1.6 as well. With regards to market expectations, again we see that uh, a rate cut according to the yields of the Fed Fat futures is uh, fully priced in, is still fully priced in for uh, September. Now we will talk about the pound. Uh, the British currency was yesterday's uh, big winner as we saw at the start of uh, this video. And it was fueled by news uh, that UK uh, 
Prime Minister Boris Johnson forced Finance Minister Sajid Javid to step down after he refused to replace his uh, special advisors. Johnson appointed uh, Rishi Sunak as the new Finance Minister, a person very loyal uh, to him. Uh, having it to gi and given that uh, Javid was not on the same page with uh, Johnson's uh, policy advisor overspending plans, adopting a more cautious stance, uh, his uh, replacement by Sunak sparked hopes of uh, more fiscal support, something that may lessen the need for a rate cut by the Bank of England. So, expectations of more support by the government lessen the need of uh, a rate cut and growth support by uh, and monetary support by the Bank of England. As uh, for our view, the pound may continue marching higher due to expectations of a larger uh, fiscal package, but we will not get overly excited over a long-term recovery. Let's not forget that the UK is about to start negotiations with the EU over their future relationship, including trade, and with Prime Minister Johnson insisting that any accord should be found before December, the risk of a disorderly exit uh, at that, po at that uh, point of time remain, remains well on the table. Thus, the pound may, set, may be set for a bumpy, for a bumpy right, with, uh, any talks revealing, with any talks revealing huge uh, divergence, divergence in uh, positions, having the potential to keep a lead on any rallies and even trigger uh, decent slides. For now, we prefer to exploit any potential pound gains against uh, risk linked currencies like the Aussie and the Kiwi, which could well come under selling interest if uh, news and headlines continue, uh, continue to point to a fast spreading of uh, the coronavirus, the outbreak of which started in China, the main trading partner of uh, both Australia and New Zealand. Now, passing the ball to the Euro. The common currency continued to slide yesterday, taking for another day the last place on the G10 performance table. As we know that yesterday, this may have been due to weak economic data coming out from the Eurozone, which may have raised concerns that the second estimate of Eurozone's GDP for the fourth quarter, due out today, may be revised lower, from a modest 0.1% quarter-over-quarter growth to stagnation. So if indeed this is the case, the currency's uh, tumble is likely to accelerate and if risk appetite takes another hit in the following days, we expect the biggest uh, declines to be against the safe heavens. The dollar may be the best uh, choice uh, as it has been also supported by decent economic data like uh, last Friday's uh, better than expected employment report. Af and here we need to know that uh, we need to know that after the dip below last year's low, euro dollar is now trading in waters last seen in uh, in April 2017. Now between the franc and the yen, we would choose the yen, as we are reluctant to call for further declines in the euro in the euro CHF uh, exchange rate, as the Swiss National Bank may decide to intervene into that exchange rate at any given time. Now let's talk about uh, the rest of today's events. During the US session we have the retail sales for January. Headline sales are anticipated to have grown 0.3% month over month, the same pace as in December, while core sales are forecast to have slowed to 0.3% month over month from uh, 0 0.7. What's more, both industrial and manufacturing productions for the, for the same month are expected to have slid 0.2% month over month. So following the better than expected CPIs, we now doubt that these data sets will be enough to prompt investors to bring much forth their the timing of when they expect the Fed uh, rate cut to be delivered. For that to happen, we may need to see huge disappointments. The, pre the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for February is also coming out and the forecast is for a small decline to 99.3 from 99.8. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. Sorry, it's Friday. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again on... Uh, 
on, on Tuesday. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can su subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at, uh, at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a great day and a great weekend. Bye-bye.